Hello, um, my name is Jax Murphy, and today I'll be talking about Islamic art and visual aesthetic, aesthetics in, um, in Islam and the Muslim religion. Um, this presentation is a combination of my work and the work of Jonathan Ned. Um, without further ado, I will begin by talking about the history of Islamic art. It's really important to talk about the history because um, Islamic art is more of a art form that is influenced by a variety of factors um, rather than just one location or one point in history. It reaches across a lot of lands and it really encompasses a lot of different forms. Um, so it, it's important to say um, that it's a very diverse art form. Um, Islamic art describes the art created by Muslims in service of their faith and it also is the art and architecture historically produced in the lands ruled by Muslims. Um, so that means it's not just solely based on religion, instead it also has to do with the lands that the Muslim peoples were in. Uh, first examples of Islamic art um, were and are a blend of classical and Iranian decorative themes and motifs because of the Muslim reach in their lands. Um, historically, ancient Muslims expressed themselves through poetry and this was one of the most common forms of Islamic art in the beginning of their development. Um, and that came from the textbook. The impact of the Muslim faith and the Sint Islamic State gradually created a unique Islamic art with many different impacts and aspects of different lands and different cultures throughout um, the Muslim land. Um, Islamic art's formative period um, so the beginning is classified with the Umayyad Caliphate from the years 661 AD to 750 AD. And because of the geographical spread and ge ge geographical reach, this is something I've already noted on, but the art experienced a wide range of regional and national styles influences. So like I said before, that just means that everything just kind of came together over time. And it wasn't one one moment in history or one place where Islamic art formed. It was an art form that formed over time. Um, some important themes in Islamic art are uh, is one of them is that the idea of arabesque. Um, this is the use of stylized geometrical floral or uh, vegetal designs in a repetition um, in Islamic art, as you can see in the photo on the screen. Um, repetition is one of the most important aspects of art besides when we talk about calligraphy. However, we see that everything repeats itself here. And oftentimes um, artists in Islam would, or Islamic artists would make mistakes in repetition to show that they are not perfect. Um, and the only perfect being is Allah or God. Um, Islamic art and symbolism um, and repetition symbolizes Allah's transcendent, indivisible, and infinite nature. Um, a very important belief in the Muslim faith or the Islamic faith. Um, there's importance of patterns and Arabic calligraphy instead of using human or animal figures. And this is because that many Muslims believe that drawing a human or an animal is an example of idolatry and is forbidden in the Quran. And um, it is a sin against God to these people. And uh, this is because they use, there is a, a sin in the Quran that says that you can't um, worship any animal or other human other than Allah because he is the one and true God. Um, but there is something that goes along with this because the people, the Islamic people are allowed to draw humans or animal figures, but they must always have a head and you cannot draw one without without it. Um, this isn't something that's practiced by every Islamic artist, but um, it's an important aspect of this. Um, here are some examples of calligraphy. Um, calligraphy is the most highly regarded form of Islamic art just because it is the most difficult. Um, here you see uh, calligraphy work inscribed in fluth, um, but next you see a tile with calligraphy on it, which is also an art form in itself. Um, here we have some paintings. These are examples of really famous paintings and concourse of birds, garden gathering, and Akbar with lion and calf. You see that these actually do have people in them, but the animals 
and the people are all represented respectfully. Um, here we have rugs and carpets. Um, they are all used mostly for prayer or hung on walls. And um, the one on the far right was one of the first examples. Um, Islamic architecture is very unique and it also embodies some of the styles and patterns and repetition that we talked about earlier when we were talking about the themes. Um, as you can see in these mosques, they're huge. Um, the Taj Mahal, the most fam one of the most famous pieces of Islamic architecture. And then the dome here in Istanbul and the Alhambra in Spain, um, all developed uh, throughout time during, during the expansion of Islamic art. And um, yeah. So another art form is ceramics. Um, here you see a variety of bowls and pots and whatnot. Um, yeah, here is the glass, the stained glass, and just another example of rock crystal. Um, the stained glass window in a mosque in Shiraz, Iran. Uh, very great example of the beauty and repetition also that we see. And here we have a rock crystal ur made from the Fatimid Caliph um, Al-Aziz in around the year 1000. Um, here I have my URLs for the images I used and here is the bibliography for the entire presentation. Um, now I will give it on over to Jonathan. Thank you. So today I'm going to be talking about the art and the three empires of Islam. First is the Ottoman Empire, and the impressive longevity combined with an immense territory led to a vital and distinctive art, including plentiful architecture, mass production for tiles and vessels, and most notably is Nikware, which is important metalwork and jewelry. The Ottomans are known for the development of a bright red pigment called Iznik Red, which reached its height in the 16th century, both in tile work and pottery. And from the 18th century, Ottoman art came under considerable European influence. And here are just like a few pictures of the Ottoman art. So in the Mughal Empire, the Mughal Empire lasted from 1526 all the way until, they said technically 1858. And this period is the most notable period for luxury arts of the court and Mughal styles heavily influenced local Hindu. The Mughal <clears throat> miniature started as they began important Persian artists, but soon local artists were trained into the same style so they didn't have to import Persian artists anymore. The realistic portraits and images of animals and plants were soon developed in Mughal art beyond what the Persians had achieved. This led to the size of the miniature, um, the miniature arts increasing and sometimes moved onto canvases which were a lot bigger. The arts of jewelry and craving, the arts of jewelry and the carvings of gems such as jasper, jade, rubies, diamonds, and emeralds are mentioned by the Mughal Khan chronicler. They were also fine metal, metal urges and locally produced wood steel. And Mughals also introduced the beadry technique in which silver motives are pressed against a black background and here are some of the pictures for the the muggle art um the Saf safavids and the i can't really say that i'm sorry but the safavids dynasty lasted from 1501 to 1786 and the ceramic arts are marked by the strong influence of chinese porcelain which is often executed in blue and white the art of manuscript illumination also achieved new heights in the 17th century, a new type of painting developed based around the album Morocco. These albums were the creations of connoisseurs who bound together sheets containing paintings, drawings, or calligraphy by various artists. And these are the pictures for the Savavids. 